Welcome back. I got some friends in the shop today. Everybody should probably recognize Steve 2.0 and special guest Andrew. That's right. You guys might see some of Andrew's car up uh, in the future and he's going to come along on power tour with us. Today we are after this big mystery box over here from Ryan Hicks out in Ohio. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to go through everything we have for that. The goal today is to try to get the front suspension done and we may even peek at the rear brakes. This is the box I've been waiting for for quite a while. My buddy Ryan Hicks, uh, Hicks Fab Garage. I'm gonna put his YouTube channel up here. He's uh, kind of another Datsun aficionado who I met uh, through Facebook Marketplace. I actually bought the engine and transmission for this car from him. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into what's in this box. I originally talked to Ryan. He messaged me and said he had a whole bunch of suspension parts available. Well, it turns out Ryan's got parts for like three or four of these cars in his garage. So uh, this right here, is a new fender, whoops, new fender emblem. Uh, the original fender emblem I had for this car broke in half, and the fenders aren't drilled for these yet, so I do have to drill a couple pilot holes in these, uh, but that's a new used fender emblem. Well, that is a power steering pressure reducing setup for the LS in the Oldsmobile, so unrelated, ignore that. So Ryan did have a couple of these headlight bezels sitting around, the two that I have on the Datsun right now are kind of rusty. Uh, you can actually see through them from the back. It's kind of like this one here. He sent it to me anyway. Uh, so I have this one here. I think someday I could sandblast and paint this and reuse it. All right, now for the good stuff. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about this. So Ryan actually bought this. Uh, this is a master cylinder brace. This is made by uh, Techno Toy Tuning or T3. So this is a billet aluminum piece that actually mounts to the strut tower right in front of the master cylinder to prevent it from being able to flex forward under hard braking. So when we're drifting this thing or when we're drag racing or when we're doing some canyon driving, because there's tons of canyons in Wisconsin. Thank you, Ryan, this thing is sick. All right, so here's the point where, here's why I bought all this stuff. So this is a factory Datsun lower control arm. However, this has already been sandblasted and painted, and if you can see in here, it's got new polyurethane bushings from Energy Suspension and new Moog ball joints. So both of the control arms are like this. Ryan did all this work previously for his car, and then he ended up changing setups. And there's the other one. All right, so here we've got strut rods with new polyurethane bushings, sandblasted, painted, ready to go. Same thing on the other side. Here's the other piece that made this purchase totally worth it. These are brand new inner and outer tie rods as well as new adjusting sleeves in the middle. So any of you 510 guys might understand that finding all four of these inner and outer for both sides on Rock Auto or any other website is damn near impossible. They usually have all, they usually have three of the four available and you can't get the fourth one. So uh, he has all four of them, brand new, everything's ready to go, or should make the full suspension replacement on the front end really, really easy. So I think what I'm going to do, since I have two people here to help, is I'm going to put Steve 2.0 and Andrew on the rear brakes. They're going to pull the wheels off back there, pull the drums off, and just see what we're dealing with. I have not looked at them since I've owned this car, and instead of it being a funny thing that comes up later when we're trying to leave for power tour, I figured we would actually look at it now, maybe give ourselves a chance to have brakes on all four wheels. Uh, if there's anything major back there that's a disaster, I don't know, we could always just plug the rear line and just pray, right? So while they're doing that, I'm gonna work on the front. Uh, we gotta replace all the suspension anyway because everything on here is trash. The bushings are junk, the ball joints are junk, tension control rods are junk, everything. So I bought all these parts from my friend that they're all already reconditioned. I can just slap them right in. Right. Try hitting right on the face a few times. Hang on, Andrew. 
give her yeah. I give her a wallop. Like yeah. You can't thread something in to push off. It, it appears that something is broken off in there. Yeah, the same on this side. Watch out. Here it'll, I'm talking like we're gonna Alright. Give her the beans. Right? <laughs> Right. Holy shit, these are screwed. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Dude, they're, okay. Hang on, we'll get you in close. This is insane. These, these drum brakes are what you would call destroyed. So this here is what's left of the rear shoe that I'm peeling off by hand. Okay, this is what's left of that. Uh, yeah, so here's the backing plate, and I don't know if you guys, yeah, okay, so this up here looks to be like paper thin, and it is. Yeah, that's what's left of that. So these would not have worked, and my guess would be that this wheel cylinder is junk, and it's leaking, and yeah, the brakes are completely gone on this side, so we're gonna pop off the drum on the driver's side and see how much worse it is. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, look at that. Oh hey, oh. this one's, there's the shoe, right? So the, the pin came out of the retaining washer in the spring here, right? That's what holds the shoe on right there. Those popped out. That's why the shoe's flopping in the wind. Uh, but if you'd be so kind and let me see that screwdriver. So same kind of thing. There's a little more meat on this one, but uh, the pad material is just turning into nothing so uh my guess would be both of these wheel cylinders and or the axle seal is leaking and is covering these in oil okay we're gonna do a little bit more preventative maintenance type shit here we're actually gonna check the level in the diff if there's no oil in the diff probably because it all leaked out right here but i also see evidence of a pinion seal leak so We'll hop under the car and check the diff fluid. Uh, it looks like the diff fill plug is actually leaking as well. Literally, it's that's, just crumbling that's pieces. That's insane. Yeah. Was there <clears throat> any brake fluid in this when you got it? No, the master cylinder was dry. So it's fine. Uh, anyway, let's check the diff real quick. All right, so Andrew pulled this already and pulling the diff plug. We have fluid in there, and it actually looks pretty good. I'm still thinking that we have bad axle seals, but we've at least got fluid up to here in the diff. So that's encouraging. Right, it'll be like the pause things on TikTok, you know, the pause game. Yeah. And there's some scantily clad thing or whatever, and they're like, ass, and then it's gone. <laughs> okay, so you can see under here, this is the center link. It was cut twice and then re-welded to try to clear uh, the oil pan on a different engine. So this one I can't use. Get this out. Seems pretty easy. We just have to pop the nut here on the idler arm, uh, undo the bolts or the nuts from either steering arm on either side. And then we have to just undo the joint right there on the Pitman arm off the steering box. This is a tie rod. You guys saw how I put this together last time with my automotive mastery. It just falls apart, right? Because I'm so good at this. I don't even need special tools to take suspension apart. Okay, so we've got the attachment to the idler arm under here, and that thing has not been loosened. So let's grab the half inch impact and rip that thing right apart. Oh, this is a three ace. Don't grab the right socket, grab an adapter. I don't know where the, the right socket is, but this is now the right socket. Oh man, I won. You guys ever get this? The freaking nut gets stuck in the socket, drives me crazy. Then you gotta thread it back on there, and then pull the socket off. It's my favorite. I really don't wanna use a pickle fork on this. <sighs> I don't wanna ruin this little washer thing here. There it is. Ta-da! It's spinning the stud. It is spinning the stud. At least uh, at the end. I see what you're saying there. We'll do it or not. I think oh. that's working. Oh, it's spinning. Is it? <laughs> All right, just pull harder. There you go. That's loose. Yeah. It's 
threads are all. Oh yeah. Here we are. All right, so there's uh, one sloppy mess of linkage. And here's the other one. I'll kind of show you what's going on, why we got to replace it. So here's why we have to replace this. This is the one that came out. You can see, let's see. Yep, okay. So you can see here's the factory one. Here's the one that was modified. All right, so this actually kind of messed with the steering geometry. So um, I think what we'll do, hey, look at this. I can reuse this seal right here, put right on that joint. Perfect, look at that. Okay, so this right here, all we really need is a center link. We're gonna disassemble this and then grab the, the new tie rod ends, get that all assembled. Uh, and then let's see, I think before we do that though, we'll come over here and we'll rip out the old tension rods with these absolutely incredible bushings, right? So we're gonna undo these guys from the lower control arm. So essentially, we'll just drop out the whole front suspension like we did before. And it's the struts and the coilovers and the brakes are just gonna hang by the four bolts that hold the strut into the tower. So they'll dangle there, that'll be fine. And then we can reassemble everything else with all the reconditioned parts. So this car already had these aluminum spacers in here to adjust for bump steer. So in order to replace the ball joint, uh, this is a steering arm. I removed this from the car. This sandwich is between the steering arm and the strut bottom, which changes the relationship between the steering arm and the steering, or in the tie rods. So anyway, pull this off of here. It just kind of sits down on this little raised area, right? There's like a cup machined in here to accommodate for the castle nut on the ball joint. So just gonna pull this cotter pin out of here and swap the ball joints over really quick probably give these a probably give these a brake cleaner bath and a shot of black paint while we're at it I use this for everything I mean is that Eric um, probably I think we got more company big big guy on a little ATV yeah big guy like a six foot three dude on a kid's four-wheeler yeah that's Eric that's my neighbor yep I like it I mean, famous YouTuber, S Motorsports. Dope. Right? That's right. Look who it is. I didn't know you had more people. I, I brought cold snacks. You brought cold <laughs> snacks. Look at this guy. See, but this is what I'm talking about. I only brought two. And I brought your stuff that I've been borrowing for a while. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure there's tools of yours over here somewhere. Or did you take back your lift plate already? Yeah. I got okay. That. I had his carburetor lift plate for like six months. Like in this neighborhood, it's basically like whoever's got tools, if they're not in your garage, they're in someone else's garage. Steve and I do that all the time. Half of his tools are in my shop because I don't know. He left them here. Or I left stuff at his house. It's fine. Yeah. Look at the rear. There's still backing plate in there. That's not gone. It'll make noise but you won't be able to hear it. This thing is gonna be making so much horsepower. Right, exactly, just plug them off. 70% of the braking is done in the front, so why not just make it an even 100, right? <laughs> so yeah, I'm just running this through the parts washer. Oh. Were the upper ball joints normally riveted on the dots or are they would've been bolts in the back here? Ooh, did I just see what I think I saw? That is bent, isn't it? Yes. I got new ones here. Put it all back together and finally get it bent. You guys see how bent that is? Holy crap. I'm not sure if we're gonna put this back together or not. Okay, so this is the, I'm assuming, whatever this is called, the pivot shaft that goes into the center, uh, the cross member, and then the control arm actually bolts on back here, right? So if you look at this, this thing is bent to hell. This is a passenger side pivot shaft that came out. Well, it just so happens that my spare cross member that I got from Ryan in Ohio, so thanks again for saving my ass, it had one pivot shaft in it, and this one is straight. So, the driver's side pivot shaft is straight, the, the uh, replacement passenger side pivot shaft is straight. So I'm gonna run these through the blaster, get them a coat of paint, and then we're uh, on to on to the next thing. So, 
everything suspension wise is disassembled and I sandblasted the aluminum spacers here as well as the steering arms on either side and I just kind of wire wheeled the center link, fog everything black, let it dry, then we can get to assembly. All right, we're gonna let that coat flash off, dry up a little bit, flip them over, hit them again, and then uh, get to reassembly. So just to give you guys a little bit of an overview, here's, here's kind of what's going on and why we're just replacing everything. So here is the strut rod bushing from the driver's side, literally coming apart. Here's the new one I got from Ryan. It's already been sandblasted and painted and it has new uh, energy suspension urethane bushings in it. These are the pivot shafts. I just took these out and ran them through the blaster quick. Uh, one of them was bent, but I found a spare. So here's the other passenger side. Bushings are destroyed. Uh, the ball joints, they don't look too bad, uh, but, but both of them have broken off bolts in the ball joint. Oh, this one does not, sorry. One of them does. Uh, let's see so here's the new lower ball joint and the control arm with the fresh pushing in there this has already all been sandblasted and painted so and then the new tie rods it's going to save me a ton of time uh, we're just waiting for this stuff over here to finish drying then we can put everything back together so i think we'll enjoy an adult soda or something similar while that paint dries and then we're going to shove this stuff on the car well can you guys see in here okay that's the the hole for the pivot shaft for the lower control arm, right? See, there's a little taper right here. That's what actually seats into a tapered boss here in the cross member. So pivot shaft goes in first, centers in that tapered boss. So the threads on this, the threads on this pivot shaft are actually kind of gacked. This is the used one that I pulled out of a spare cross member. I need to go get a die so that I can clean those threads up. But for today, for assembly purposes, I'm gonna throw this sucker in there. Throw the nut on the front. Yeah. Now the lower control arm with the new bushing in there slips right over that, right up against that washer. And then these, uh, these pivot shafts have a weird, they actually have a keyway cut in the shaft on the back side and they have this special funky washer here uh, i'm not exactly sure why this is or what this is for but slide that washer on right up against the bushing and throw the nut on there uh, so the next thing we need is that little aluminum spacer and then we can swing this whole arm up into place and hook it up so I'm probably not doing this in the right order and I'm sure that there's going to be somebody in the comments that will educate me on what that is. But this is how I'm going to do it. So we're just going to snug down this ball joint for now. Because this isn't really tightened down to anything. That'll work. Good enough for now. Alright, so from the last video where I showed you guys how to do cotter pins up here. Right, this is the way I've done cotter pins for a really long time and it works just fine. Uh, they don't come out, but it's not clean, right? It's not pretty. This gets covered with a dust cap, so who really cares? Well, in this application here, I tried something a little different. So let's see how well you guys can see. So I shoved the cotter pin in this way. So the two feet or the two legs of the cotter pin were stacked vertically through the castle nut. And then I took one leg of the cotter pin and I bent it up and over then I trimmed the lower leg of the cotter pin and then folded it down flat. So I think this is gonna give us the maximum clearance for that spacer block that's gotta go over the top of this. If I ever have to work on like maintenance on a daily driver, like a yeah. new car, I, it is the worst work <laughs> yeah. ever. I hate actual mechanic work, but if you say, hey, do you wanna do like full upgrade. brake rebuild upgrade. or upgrades <laughs> to a, an old shit box like yeah, this right. that's covered in grease and oil, like yeah, 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 that's way fun. But don't ask me to change the oil on your 2011 Camry. But for those of you at home, right? Strut, lower control arm, ball joint, steering arm. This is kind of a mess. It goes together, whatever, this way. And we're about to show you. Ball joints just gotta be tilted just right to kind of seat up inside this 
steering or the strut there until these can get started. All right, back out here next day and uh, all my support staff is gone. And uh, if I'm gonna hit my quarterly metrics in the next corporate review, uh, I need to do some work myself. Looking to make a repair on the pivot shaft for passenger side control arm mount. Uh, yeah, I think I gotta get to that first because those threads are screwed and we're not gonna be able to put anything else together until we can actually tighten that lower control arm down. All right, so here's the pivot shaft on the passenger side. And I'm sure you guys can see that from here that the threads on this thing are a little bit gacked. So I ran out and bought a die. This is M12 by 1.25. Not really a common die. I don't have it in a set that I own. So I went out and bought one and put this in the vise and clean up the threads. So it turns out I don't have a big enough die handle for this. So I'm going to very carefully get this started by hand and then use an adjustable. Try to run it on that way. Does PB Blaster work as cutting oil? I don't know, maybe. Should you do it? I don't care. Do it if you want. This is what I have. Probably shouldn't do this with an adjustable wrench either, but this is just an operation to try to see if we can save the threads on this. They got gacked pretty bad. So my hope is if we just go slow, maybe we can repair the threads on this. Just enough at least to get past them. The, th the damage to the threads on this <coughs> The damage to the threads on this is actually towards the outside. If we can get the threads nice enough to where the nut can go past that, I think it'll go on and we'll be fine. Sure seems like that's working. Yeah, we did lose part of one thread there, looks like. Well, it looks like everything else cleaned up. Okay. So here's the bore through the center, sorry, cross member. Here's that pivot shaft. I'll show that guy in there. Should bottom out nicely in that taper bore. And grab the impact and zip that home. So these pivot shafts, they do have special washer that goes on the inside. There's actually a taper machined into this washer and it fits nice and centered on the taper that's machined onto the pivot shaft. So that washer goes on first and the control arm slips on over that and it can just dangle there. Then we have our keyed washer and then the nut. I'll run that guy tight. How's that? Look at that. Nice. All right. Lower control arm. Nice. It's a little tight, but everything moves nice. So should be all right. It's definitely a little bit difficult to get this all lined up. Oh, that's why. This tension rod is in the way. All right, after a lot of jostling, moving stuff around, the little center board in this aluminum spacer fits up underneath the strut here. And then these bolts are finally started and pulled up to where we can tighten them up. So remind me, I may have to come back here after this thing is set on its own weight. Uh, yeah, it's your job to remind me not to forget to check that. Time for the tension rod. These things aren't so bad as long as they're not tight. So if these tension rods are in or under any kind of tension, it could be kind of tough. But the way that this bolts together, and I'll see if I can show you a little better. All right, so the way that this bolts together is the tension rod here there's bolts that drop through it and they drop through the ball joint and the lower control arm to bolt this whole mess together just like that. Okay. I'm gonna drop the bolts through the tension rod first. Try to get it lined up with the ball joint. And there you have it. That's how everything is tied together up here. 
The only thing left is to hook up the steering stuff. I'm gonna snug this up. I do still have to snug up the tension rod here, but I think I'm gonna do all that in its own video, kind of giving this thing a, an at-home sort of cheap-ass alignment. So we'll skip that for now. Nice. Okay, time for the steering stuff. For anybody wondering how dots and steering linkage and stuff goes together, here is the center link. Okay, and we are looking at this as if we are the front of the car. So the rear of the car is that way. So this is driver's side, this is passenger. So passenger, sorry, driver's side, inner is the short guy, short one, okay? And this actually mounts to the back side, the back side of the center link here. Driver's side has an L. Passenger side has an R. Short side in. Passenger side, passenger side bolts or shoves in from the back. Align with the taper. And there we are. So obviously everything's loosely put together right now. So we'll go uh, shove it on the car and I'll show you how it hooks up. Okay, how this whole mess attaches here is the idler arm on the passenger side of the car. And over here, if you can see, is the pitman arm that comes right off of the steering box. This center link right here will go up just like this. So the tie rods are actually on the back side of the center link. So I'm gonna start off attaching this to the idler arm here, maybe. It's kind of hard when everything's all floppy. Okay, and then the other side, Probably have to just move this, move the idler arm enough to get the other part of the center link here into the pitman arm. Yeah. There we go. So then here, tie rods just attach like they have before. All right, and just like that, you can see here's the driver's side connected to the pitman arm coming off the steering box right here. Here's the center link. It runs right in front of the transmission. And then here is the idler arm. Connects right over here. Here's the inner tie rod, adjuster and outer tie rod to the passenger side. So what I'm happy to report, and if anybody is doing a KA swap in a Datsun, the factory steering linkage here will clear the KA transmission and the KA pan. You see how much better of a view I can get you guys. So you've got an inch and a half or so of room between the bell housing and the steering link uh, fore and aft. And then you've got at least an inch or so of clearance between the steering rod and the oil pan. So there is no interference of any kind under here for steering when you're using factory 510 parts with uh, a KA in here with the KA transmission. So let's look, see here, it looks like that rotor's turned in a little bit and so is that. So it looks like we probably have like an inch and a half to two inches of toe in. I think that's gonna wrap up the front suspension overhaul and the dots in here. Uh, it would have been interesting to be able to drive this car before doing all of these upgrades because I'm sure with all of the worn out components that we took out of this thing, just changing the suspension bushings in the front would have made a huge difference in how this thing drives. I'm interested to see how this thing is going to drive and how it's going to brake. I forgot to mention, some of you might be wondering what I'm going to do with the rear brakes. 
So at this point, I'm actually not gonna do anything. I know that I need shoes and wheel cylinders, likely, and drums. However, I do have, under that pile of parts over there, I have a Ford 8.8 .8 rear end that has already been shortened and mocked up to go in this car. I think I'm gonna forestall fixing anything with the rear brakes for now, just so that I can focus on getting the turbo kit finished, wiring, plumbing, all that stuff, so that we can actually get it running. I can run this thing with just front brakes, at least to get the thing broken in, uh, moving around, diagnose any potential leaks or any other problems. When it gets down to it, I will just put shoes and cylinders in and drums. Uh, that's what's going on with the brakes. Don't worry, they are, they are on the list, but they're not critical at this point. That's it for this week. Thank you to Ryan Hicks. Huge, huge help, man. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to install that Brake Master brace. I think that thing is a sick piece. Thank you for that. Thank you to Steve 2.0, my friend Andrew, and Eric from S Motorsports for helping out yesterday. That was kind of a big undertaking to get this all done in one afternoon. If anybody wants a shirt, we have a merch site. That link is in the description. If you like what you're seeing, if you want to see more on the Datsun, hit subscribe. There's plenty of videos, I think 24 or 25 with this one on that Datsun. I'm doing a full build on it. Any questions or comments or anything you have about this car, anything I might have missed, drop that in a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.